హలో టు ఎవ్రీ వన్ వెల్కమ్ టు దిస్ కోర్స్ ఆన్ న్యూమెరికల్ లీన్ రాజ్ బ్రాండ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ ది టెన్త్ లెక్చర్ లెట్ అస్ రికాల్ క్విక్లీ వాట్ వీ డిడ్ ఇన్ ది లాస్ట్ లెక్చర్ వీ డిడ్ వాట్ వీ కాల్ ద డికంపోజిషన్ ఆఫ్ ది మ్యాట్రిసెస్ అండ్ ఐగన్ వాల్యూస్ అండ్ ఐగన్ ఫంక్షన్స్ అండ్ నార్మ్ ఆఫ్ ఏ వెక్టార్ హౌ ద నార్మ్ అండ్ కండిషన్ నెంబర్ వుడ్ హెల్ప్ అస్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు ఫైండ్ అవుట్ ది సొల్యూషన్ టు ది సిస్టమ్స్ today we would be talking about the inverse pseudo inverse and the least square problem look at this uh, pseudo inverse is a kind of uh, you know the inverse where actually we try to use the decomposition through least square problem let us assume that a is m by n matrix where m is greater than or equal to n and it has full rank look at this and has full rank full rank so yes since a has a full rank a transpose a is invertible that means we could able to find out a transpose inverse a transpose a is invertible so let us denote a transpose a multiplied with a transpose will be equal to a plus right will be equal to a plus now let us define the matrix what is this matrix a plus a plus i do call it as pseudo inverse so a plus is equal to a transpose multiplied with a all inverse multiplied with a transpose this is what we call pseudo inverse or the more penrose generalized inverse of a so all of you knowing very well the generalized inverse of a is a special class of matrices right what we do in the the case of generalized inverses right even we can able to find out the inverse of the matrices where the matrix is not actually square matrix right so in fact in the case of square matrix what happens is the left inverse and right inverse both happens to be the same so which we call it as a inverse of the matrix so we can write it as a plus is equal to a transpose a whole inverse a transpose a whole inverse into a transpose which will be nothing but a my a inverse a transpose whole inverse a transpose which is nothing but a inverse so essentially what i did is i try to calculate the inverse by pre multiplying with a inverse so here i pre multiplied with a inverse a inverse l transpose whole inverse because all of you knowing very well ab inverse is nothing but b inverse times of a inverse so in the same fashion what i did here a inverse a transpose is not whole inverse a transpose so you know very well this is nothing but so if i transpose is equal to let's say p so p inverse of p is equal to i right which implies that is a inverse times of i is equal to a inverse which i do get over here right so which i do get over here as expected so essentially what i did was i try to compute this a transpose a whole inverse multiplied with a and i post multiplied with a transpose then use the concept of that is ab inverse is equal to b inverse a inverse i could able to arrive a inverse this is what i call it as the pseudo inverse right pseudo inverse is nothing but a transpose a whole inverse into a transpose which i call it as pseudo inverse and a is a matrix in fact a is m by n matrix if it is square matrix then the many of the our calculations would boil down but in general we do spec out the square matrices that is why i wrote it as m is greater than or equal to n so if m is equal to n then this should have been a, a square matrix right that's the basic idea of this uh, pseudo inverse let us look at the remark the generalized inverse of a rectangular matrix generalized inverse of a rectangular matrix so if somebody is interested they can study what we call the title is the generalized inverses generalized inverses by c radhakrishnam rao which is one of the fundamental book 
and you can find out lot of applications and lot of examples in this title which generalized inverses so again we do go back what we call the condition number the condition number of such matrix is condition number of a condition number of a that is equal to norm of a multiplied with norm of a plus this is the condition number right so let us define formally if a if an m by n matrix a has full rank matrix right then condition number of a is nothing but that is norm of a multiplied with norm of a plus so in the previous case we also defined that is a plus turns out to be a inverse so therefore we do get what we call the the inverse is nothing but the a inverse so a inverse is nothing but a inverse of it a, a, a transpose of whole inverse is a specialized matrices which is analogous to what we call the uh, pseudo inverse right so therefore essentially we can define a condition number which will define the stability of this matrices that is norm of a multiplied with norm of a plus this is what is called the pseudo inverse well now let us look at very simple example you look at very simple example 2 by 2 that is three rows two columns okay what is the rank of this matrix a rank of a is equal to 1 2 2 3 is equal to 3 minus 4 minus 1 not equal to 0 so rank of this matrix is row of a is equal to 2 okay so therefore so therefore clearly a has full rank matrix because rank of a is equal to 2 right rank of a is equal to 2 now let us matrix b is equal to 3 5 9 so now let us compute a plus that is pseudo inverse so a plus is nothing but a transpose a whole inverse times of a transpose when you multiply this you do get this matrix right so the first element is this matrix right and uh, and uh, when i do this uh, multiplication with a transpose so ultimately i land up with this matrix that is two rows three columns two over three now for this matrix interestingly let me find out the condition number so what is the condition number condition number of a is nothing but norm of a2 that is 2 norm norm of a2 plus that is pseudo inverse norm right okay so this turns out to be what we call the after calculating and all this turns out to be 7.6656 that is a pseudo inverse of a, that is inverse that is norm of a2 norm of a2 this is nothing but 2.4 so 7 to the 14 it turns out to be 15.7047 so the least square solution is x is equal to a plus times of b and this is what is called pseudo inverse so now let us go ahead with this sensitivity of the least square problems how they are actually sensitive for the least square problems very important concept in the case of the uh, how actually the solution of the least square problem behaves we study the sensitivity of the least square solution to perturbation data so we study quite often how actually the when the solution is getting into the perturbation so because many of the real situations we see that they are actually not normal and they do perturb with small change there will be huge changes so that is what is called perturbation data we investigate how a least square solution changes with respect to small changes in the data. So that means we wanted to see those cases where little change will have an enormous effect or little change will have a smaller effect. And we consider two cases. One is the perturbation in vector B and perturbation in matrix A. So we can have a two kinds of perturbations. Either you can do in the vector or we can do in the what do you call the anti permutation matrix. We can have a permutation matrix so therefore we will have a both vector b and also as a permutation matrix well look at this what are the different cases you do have it we will have a case one that is perturbation vector b the vector b has been permuted to b term so i write it as b cap is equal to b plus delta of b 
So the vector B has permitted to B tilde B cap is equal to B plus delta B, but A has A has remained. It is a kind of the perturbation theorem. Let x and y, let x and x cap respectively be the unique least square solution to the original problem and pattern problem. So I will call this x bar as the pattern problem solution, and this x is the the normal solution. So assuming that if br not equal to zero, then relative change I can write it as x cap minus x by divided by x, and this is less than or equal to condition number of delta of br upon delta of br. Hence, condition number of a and delta b r are respectively the pro the projection of vector b and delta b r onto projection of r a. So therefore, it is very much analogous to the projections. So that means the projection of vector b and uh, delta b onto r a so could be defined in the course of time how it would be helpful to the realistic situations. Well, let us prove this uh, theorem. Let us prove this theorem. Since x and x cap are the unique least square solutions to the obtained and the perturbation problems, so we will have x is equal to a plus of b and x cap is equal to a plus of b plus delta b, right? So x is equal to a plus delta b, a plus b, and x cap is equal to the, there is a perturbation the b, so b plus delta b. Let delta and b denoted the denote the projection of delta b onto the original orthogonal complement of the ra so we will write this as delta b is equal to delta of br plus delta of bn now let's uh, go ahead since delta n lies in the orthogonal of a complement of r a f a so r is an l rank space rank space okay then you do write it as n of a transpose so we have a transpose of delta of b n happens to be zero so x cap minus x is nothing but a plus of delta b that is a plus of delta b r plus delta b n that is what you got it so this is the thing which you get it so again since x is a unique least square solution so we should be able to write these things so in general what happens is if ax is equal to br which we could able to write it as the in terms of two norm so norm of x is greater than or equal to norm of br upon norm of x yes let's say we study the sensitivity of least square solutions to perturbation in data that means there will be a perturbation in the data as we see right so we investigate how a least square solution changes with respect to small changes in the data Right, that's what the perturbation plays a vital role. So perturbation in vector B and the perturbation in matrix C. A. So we consider two cases. What will happen to perturbation in vector B and the perturbation in RHS? Let us see that case one. So perturbation in vector b. So how you can able to find out the perturbation in vector b? Well, the least square right perturbation vector. So let x and x cap respectively be the unique least square solutions to the original and the perturbed solutions, where this denominator is not equal to zero. We can change write it as relative change is nothing but x cap minus x upon norm of x. That is what the condition number. So therefore, the condition number of condition number of the matrix A, condition number of delta B R, or respectively the projections of vector B on B delta B R onto the R of A, right? So let X and X bar are the unique least square solutions to the obtained and perturbed solutions. So we write it as X is equal to X of the pseudo inverse times of B, X cap is equal to pseudo inverse times of B plus delta B. So then X minus X cap X x cap minus x is equal to this thing and the delta b denote the perturbation of delta b onto the orthogonal complement of ra that is delta b is equal to delta br plus delta of bn since bn is orthogonal complement of delta ra is equal to n of a power 
t we have a power tn is equal to 0 so we can write this as x cap minus x we can write it as so this is the thing which you get it and again since x is the least square solution so this condition needs to be satisfied so ax is equal to br that is implies norm of x is greater than or equal to norm of br upon norm of a norm of a so therefore essentially what i try to say is whenever this since x is unique so unique least square solution then we will have this kind of equality so let us see the insensitive least square solution i mean how it is insensitive to the least square solution so matrix a is equal to this thing b is this and delta b is this thing very very small entries so if you write delta b r or p a times delta p so these are the entries which you get it well look at this example so delta b r will become delta times of b r is equal to p a times of delta b r is nothing but so these are the matrices 0 0.13333 so like this you do get the matrix so this matrix is when you get this matrix this is condition number turns out to be condition number is of a is equal to 10 power minus 4 times of 2.4499 so the condition number is very very small value so therefore which leads to a, a what you call a stable solution well so we expect that leads to solution will not be permitted much that means x is equal to a plus of b you write like this x cap will be like this so the relative error is 10 power minus 4 it's so reasonably not bad 10 power minus 4 so therefore the idea is there are many more problems in digital applications or I can write it as the condition number of A2 is nothing but delta BR times of delta BR that is 7.008. So, we can get the condition number from this matrix, right. So, what I did is simply I just multiplied with delta B and then I calculated X bar, their condition number I would be able to compute by using this computation. Well, let us see the pseudo inverse sensitivity theorem how actually it defines and how it is different from usual sensitivity theorem let a be a m i n matrix where m is greater than or equal to n let a plus and a tilde plus b respectively the pseudo inverse of a and a plus so that means this is the matrix that is the pseudo inverse right and uh, the p inverse is nothing but the what you call the the pseudo inverse right pseudo inverse right of a plus and a right a plus delta i a plus delta a plus delta i is the what e error so provided that the rank of a is equal to for consistency we need to check this condition rank of a is equal to rank of a cap so when i do this norm of a minus norm of norm of a minus a cap upon norm of b so we do get this as root 2 less than or equal to condition number root of e by top a so the condition number plays a vital role as we spoke earlier also not just in this example now let us look at into another example so i have a matrix a is equal to 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 5 and e is equal to 10 power minus 7 a so i multiply with the matrix a so i do get all all digits so that a plus is equal to let's say minus 2 1 2 8 5 7 1 0.567 1 0 5 0 0 like this so you will have ultimately a plus i e is equal to e a plus e is equal to some e and the form of e will be as follows that is 3 by 3 matrix so essentially what i need to say is Whenever you have a perturbation and there will be an addition of matrix A plus or minus, not that you are adding, you may also even subtract. So, according to the situation, you need to act it. Well, so further on simplification, you do get as A plus is equal to minus of 1.2844.509, like this you do get. So, norm of A minus norm of A inverse is equal to norm of A minus norm of A inverse is equal to that is 10 power minus 4 times of norm of e upon norm of a. So, e is the error in the computation. So, the condition number turns out to be 
But in the previous case, it is 10 power minus 4, very, very small value. So, this is a moderately bigger value of the uh, condition number. So, the condition number is condition number of A is equal to 15.7047. 15.7047. So, now having had this pseudo inverse, now we are ready to define what we call the normal equations method. How we can able to find out solution to these systems? When A is a MIN matrix M greater than N and full rank, the unique least square solution X satisfies the normal equations that is A inverse of AX is equal to A inverse of B. So, indeed, this approach of solving a least square problem had been familiar for many reasons. So, since A has a full rank matrix, A transpose A is symmetric matrix and positive definite, it admits the Cauchy decomposition matrix. So, Cauchy decomposition you can have by using this matrix. So, therefore, you can write this as least square solution using normal equations. So, input is A by M by N, M greater than N, matrix of full length and M vector B. So, any least square solution is this and you write expected from C is equal to A transpose of B and a square square factorization of A into B that is A transpose A times of H into H transpose. So, solving the triangular system in the presence, so you do get like this. That means H of Y is equal to C and H transpose of X is equal to Y. So, by using this, you can see that what would be the, the effectiveness of triangular system or the sequence that one could compute. Let us see very simple example. Suppose that the number of units BI of a product sold by a committed company in the district I is of 11, depo 11 uh, of a town depends upon the population of A1, AI1 of the district and the per capita income of the district. So, what we wanted to see is, we wanted to develop how the population and how the per capita income of the population would affect. So, district size is equal to 1 to 5 states and a population and this population. So, one could compute what would be the relation between the population and uh, per capita population, how these thing figures would changes and have a reflection on the uh, on the scientific thoughts, whatever we have been talking about. Suppose that the company wants to use the above table to predict future sales and beliefs that following relations. So, if you want to start a company and you have to have a forecasting, so if the data satisfies the above relations, that is B is equal to B1 plus X1 plus X2 plus X3, X4, etc. And we can write this as this is the one bit, one bit. So, not actually this is the one bit. So, of, of the bit, this is the complete bit, this is the two bits, this is the one bit plus, this is the one bit plus. So, you do have this kind of. So, with this system, what happens is you can have the system AX is equal to B. That means AX is equal to B you can have a system where the coefficient matrix is in this form 1, 274, 2450, very big numbers here you see and these are moderately small numbers, these are very small numbers. So, the matrix right hand side of is 120, 160, 223, 131 etc. So, the above is an what determined system of 5 equations and 3 and three unknowns. So, that means essentially you will have 3 unknowns and this cannot be solved by using simply by observing the the nature of the matrix, the way which we have presented over here. Well, let us simplify step 1. Form C1 is equal to Ta. Form C1, form C1 is equal to Ta. So, we do have A transpose A is equal to 703 and 182230216425 And for step 2, similarly A transpose A is equal to this thing and we can write this sigma is equal to 10 for 10 power 3 times of 0 0.0022, 0 0.009, 0 0.00. So, this is 0, 0.2160, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, and this is not 0. So, whenever you have the difficulty, we can always use this uh, capital H so that you could able to find out the uh, what you call the comparison between the entries in the given matrix. So, by solving the two triangular systems, we have the solution. So, you solve this system. So, we can form a Step 1 is the form the matrix C that is equal to A transpose into B. So, this is the matrix you do get. See that this is a very bigger matrix than trees. Similarly, form A transpose A, this is also a very bigger matrix. So, which I can write it as 10 power 3 times of this matrix. 
from here we could see what would be the nature of these entries. Well, by solving two triangular systems, we could able to get y will be in this form and x will be in this form. Y will be in this form and x will be in this form. Okay, so that makes that that makes that. So you do have a systems that is x is equal to y is equal to. We could able to obtain the different values of that is y one, y two, y three. This is x one, x two, x three. Fine. Having had these things, now let us see how we could able to obtain the numerical matrix eigen problems. See that the eigen values of a matrix A are the zeros of the characteristic polynomial determinant of a minus lambda i. One would naively think of computing the eigen values of a by finding its characteristics. So find out the characteristics and then see that what would happen to the eigen values polynomials and then computing zeros by a standard root finding procedure. So like the way which we use it transcendental equations we can find out in that fashion. Unfortunately, eigenvalues computation is via the characteristic polynomial is not a practical approach. That means finding out the eigenvalue of competition. That means to compute the eigen functions, you need to know the eigenvalues. So therefore, it is an impractical computation. Well, a standard practical algorithm for finding the eigenvalues of a matrix is QR decomposition as we see that. Right, QR decomposition. We can write this matrix A as QR decomposition with a single or double shift. Right. So, five digit arithmetic, four digit arithmetic, six digit arithmetic, you do have a different concepts. Several applications do not need knowledge of the whole spectrum. A few selected eigenvalues, usually a few largest or smaller eigenvalues. So, that means in order to evaluate this, we do not need to have a whole spectrum, but Definitely, a few selected eigenvalues usually define a large systems or small small ones that won't sufficient in order to find out the the what you call the the one which you get it in the course of time. A classical method based on the powers of A, known as power method, is useful in this chapter. So all of you knowing very well, the powers method will give you the largest eigenvalues. So one could use the the power method in order to find out the largest eigenvalues of a matrix. Well, what are the applications we see in the eigenvalues in the practical applications? Eigenvalue problems and practical applications. The problem of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors arises in wide variety of practical applications. We do get quite often in several applications like control systems, fluid mechanics, then seismic waves, then solid wave, solid mechanics. There are many more approaches you do get what you call this, this approach. Mathematical models of many engineering problems and system of differential and difference equations and the solution of these equations are often expected in terms on the eigenvalues and eigenvectors so is of the matrices of the same system so that means once you are obtained the eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be obtained by using the original matrix by solving the system a minus lambda i of x is equal to 0 a minus lambda i of x is equal to 0 so Further, many important characteristics of a physical and engineering system such as stability often can be determined only by knowing the nature and location of the eigenvalues. So once you know the location of the eigenvalues, you could able to extract many things and this uh, will make very comfortable in order to find out solution to the systems. So with this, I stop over here. I am sure that uh, you might have learned it. If you have any questions or uh, queries, you can always welcome back. So, thank you very much.